Hey everyone, welcome Aditi Srivastava who is upcoming SWA intern at Sharejet. So today he'll guide us on various topics like how one can go into ML, his research journey, coding journey. So Aditi, let's start this video with your introduction. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hi everyone. Uh, I'm Aditya. I am currently a fourth year undergraduate at Maharaja Sulukman Institute of Technology. Uh, I'm, uh, I recently received an offer from Sharechat for an SW intern. Uh, uh, I am a chess enthusiast. I love music. I love to listen to music and I'm extremely passionate about machine learning and uh, backend development. Yeah, that's about me. Congratulations, Aditya. So first coming to how one can go into machine learning and how was your journey in machine learning? Uh, so uh, I have an elder brother who is uh, six years older than me and he is currently a machine learning research engineer at Adobe. So he guided me throughout this. So he introduced me to machine learning. So uh, to start your machine learning journey, I would recommend some basic level courses first. Uh, some uh, some can prefer coding ninjas, but nowadays there are a lot of free content on YouTube. So you can prefer that too. So I'll say to have a good grasp on Python. Uh, then some library existing libraries in Python like Pandas, NumPy. Uh, if you are familiar with it, you can surely start machine learning at any time. It's uh, I know a lot of people think that it's extremely hard. Uh, uh, but the hard part about machine learning comes when you like delve into research and yeah. So for building basic projects and to have an experience with machine learning, it's not that hard. Uh, it's basic Python coding and nothing much. And you, uh, uh, I'll clear this out. You don't need to know a good amount of math to be good at machine learning. Okay, Aditya. So next coming to research journey, how one can go into research and for being a senior and like, being very much into machine learning, what uh, you can suggest to the juniors to go into this type of field? Uh, okay, so research in machine learning is that there is some pre-existing question out there which hasn't been solved or has been partially solved. There are some problems still in it. So your job is to take that question, uh, go through it, uh, analyze it, and then uh, prepare some code base, collect some data, and then uh, see the observations, what observations you're getting. So research sounds uh, like an intimidating word, but uh, it doesn't have to be a high scale research. You ha you can just solve a very basic problem. Like uh, one of my friends recently published a paper on Dijkstra algorithm, what observations he had uh, with it. So yeah, any problem you see around yourself or on internet, you can search for it. Uh, the main idea is that you have to collect some data on it, or you can also use some pre-existing data, which already other uh, foreign colleges or Indian colleges have on their websites. And then you have to prepare your code base. You have to pass the data, train your model, uh, then test it on the existing data test. Then uh, that's how you get observations. And that's what research is. So if you want to get into research, I'll just say, don't think about it too much. Uh, pick a basic problem which you want to solve and you uh, uh, it hasn't been solved or something. Some uh, problems are there with it. So uh, yeah, that's just how you get into research. You don't need to be, uh, you just need to find a teacher you want to work under. It can be your college or can be another college. You want to work under. Yeah. Okay, Aditya. So next coming to your coding journey, how you started DSA, what all you did, what text text you learned, uh, which landed you as a SD intern at Radical X. Okay, uh, so for me, like I come from a tier three college. So uh, like uh, for me, data structures, and, like everybody knows nowadays that to land a software engineering job, you need to be fluent in data structures and algorithms. So I started with it in my first semester itself. I have been practicing RDSA since then. I'm not into competitive coding at all. I have never done CP. Uh, I just do lead code and watch some tutorials on YouTube. Uh, talking about how I landed Radical X, uh, one of the professors I was working under uh, recommended me because it's a, a Radical X is an early stage startup. Uh, it just recently pivoted to another product. So he recommended me and I applied to it. There was just one round, one basic data searches and algorithm round. It's pretty easy. And that's how I got uh, my first SD internship over there. 
I did some uh, niche pretty uh, front end work in it. Uh, so yeah, uh, talking about data structures and algorithms, there's no way to start it. You just have to like uh, start from something, like start from the basics. There's no correct time to start it. Uh, if you start early on, you'll have some benefit. So I recommend students to yeah enjoy your college life and simultaneously start with data structures and algorithms. Okay, Aditya. So next coming to your interview experience at ShareJet, uh, was there any OA for it, online assessment? And if yes, um, so what was the OA pattern also? Uh, yeah, I had an online assessment. Uh, it was conducted on HackerRank. It had three questions out of which I was able to solve two. Uh, as I said, I wasn't involved in CP at any time in my college journey. But like I recommend to students, like if you want to, you can because it gives you an edge in these type of online assessment. Nowadays, online assessments are extremely hard. Same goes with ShareChat. Their online assessment was on the harder side, but I was luckily able to solve two questions in it. Um, uh, yeah, it had no way. I solved the questions after that. My recruiter reached out to me that like we are moving forward with the application. Uh, the first round I had was a standard data structures and algorithms round uh, in which I was asked a pretty simple DSA problem on priority queue, I think. Uh, the second round was a hiring manager round. Uh, it was taken by the manager. Now I'm going to work under. Uh, it was a pretty vast round uh, because he went from ev uh, everything from my resume to my projects to a little bit of designing problems, uh, uh, not system design, but uh, class designing in C++ and a bit about data structures and algorithm and course CS concepts. Uh, by course CS, I mean operating systems, computer networks, DBMS and all these things. Uh, coming back to... Uh, the online assessment part, uh, yeah, I recommend people to do CP if they have time with it because it will provide you a lot of benefit. Uh, and yeah, a project discussion part is also extremely important. If you're putting something on your resume, if you have a project on your resume, make sure that you know each and everything about it. Like even if you have copied it from the net, just make sure you are familiarized with that project because they are going to ask anything. Like they'll even ask you to launch a project, post a project. Uh, uh, so you should know inside out of your project and inside out of your resume. Uh, because uh, like in my case, uh, like my role is back in focus. So one of the projects I was recently working on, it's a partially completed project, but I still put it on, on my resume. So he asked me to present the project and I wasn't able to. Uh, I wasn't able to launch it. There were some errors coming in. So yeah, I, I would recommend you to like see those issues previously beforehand uh, going into an interview. And yeah, don't put anything in your resume that you don't know in, uh, don't uh, know about. Like uh, I have heard people saying that don't put things that you haven't done. But I believe like if you are putting things that you haven't done, just make sure that you know about it. Don't put something that you don't know about. Uh, uh, previous companies that I was interviewing at, I had the same problem. I was putting some projects that I was I hadn't worked on, and yeah, uh, uh, like they asked me a few questions on it, and I wasn't able to answer that, and I was rejected just because of it. So yeah, make sure you are ready for an interview. Data structures and algorithms is the most important part in an interview, uh, as well as your communication skills. It is the second most important thing I think. Uh, your resume should be properly formatted and should have no grammatical mistakes. Uh, in my resume, one of I had a grammatical mistake where I needed to add a capital letter, but I had added a small letter, and my manager saw it and he pointed me uh, that out to me. So yeah, th uh, that's what uh, Share Chat's interview process was. Was it off campus or on campus? Uh, it was an off-campus opportunity off and uh, yeah yeah so another thing with off-campus i uh, it wasn't any link that was provided to me I, I reached out to the recruiters and the people working at share chat that if they are hiring consider me for this profile uh, as i come from a tier three college there are not many companies that come to my campus so the best shot at uh, landing an internship i had was cold emailing and reaching out to people so that's what I did since my third year, starting with my third year. Like I reached out to people on LinkedIn that if you are hiring, just left with me. I'll be 
uh, I'm extremely passionate to work for uh, you guys. So yeah, similar thing happened with Share Chat. I think I mailed the director of my team at at the start of May, and my interview process started at the end of May. So yeah, cold emailing and LinkedIn messaging surely works. You guys should, should try it out. Okay, Aditya. So last part, like coming from Tier Three College, coming from MSIT. Uh, to getting the SWA internship at ShareChat, what can yeah. be the roadmap from your side to the juniors who can be like guided by this? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, first of all, uh, what I usually tell to my juniors is that take this out of your mind that you are from a tier three college. Okay, uh, I personally believe tier doesn't matter until unless it's an off-campus opportunity. Uh, if you are skilled enough, you will get the job. And if you are not uh, getting the job, don't blame it on your college. It's on you because you are not skilled enough yet. Uh, uh, coming back to the advice part, uh, what advice is that? See, uh, enjoying college life is extremely important because you learn a lot of things from it. Uh, but at the same part, you have to give some time to data structures and algorithms and all the other skills that you are trying to learn. Uh, if you are trying to learn web development, give good amount of time to it to machine learning dsa anything uh but yeah surely dsa is the most important part you have to do it apart from it you can do anything you want okay uh so start from it as early as possible because uh, you are from a tier 3 college right so there are uh, other students from better colleges than you who are getting opportunities but uh sitting for the same interview that you are interviewing for so if you want to have an edge over them uh it's better to start early uh then uh i think uh you should learn from your past mistakes like you did some mistakes in j j had a pretty standard procedure of solving problems giving past year question papers you didn't do it that's why you landed into a tier 3 college just try not to do the same thing while you are preparing for a job interview uh it is a standard process you have to practice as many questions as you can uh it doesn't matter you are practicing it on code chef code forces lead code geeks for geeks just try to do it. Uh, and uh, if you feel demotivated at any point of time, just take a break. Take, uh, uh, I believe that you don't need to push yourself hard enough. You just take a break, uh, start over like after a week or something. You will get whatever you want. Just work hard. 